Well, here we are. Welcome today. Good morning. Nice to have you here. Raise your hand if you wore shorts today to church. All right. Okay, there was a guy at the RV park. His, uh, oh, it's actually two. It said, I refuse to wear long pants at church all winter long, even when it was a day like today. So is that, like, is that the way you are, Bob? I mean, refuse to wear yeah, long pants? Shorts is all you need. Shorts is all you need? <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for being daring to come out here. I always say, you know, when it's a day like today, we want to fly south for the winter. That's what we want to do, right? <laughs> all right. We're glad that you came today. Thank you for being flexible. You know, flexibility is a character quality that we all really need, right? When you think about our life physically, the older we get, the less flexible we are physically. You know, it's harder to bend down and grab that dime that fell on the floor, right? You wonder, is it really worth it to lay, go down and get it or not, right? <laughs> um, but, um, but flexibility in regards to our, our character is always important, to be flexible in the context of what happens. Because guess what? There's always curveballs that, that life throws us, aren't there? So we want to be flexible. Thank you for being I mean, here today. How many are going to the Strawberry Festival later today? Raise your hand. Oh, just about all of you. Enjoy the strawberries. Is it strawberry shortcake they serve? You don't know. Okay. No. It is. Okay. Good. All right. We're glad you're here together with us today. Those on the, uh, watching us by video, we're glad that you're here with us as well. Uh, if you have a bulletin, uh, we're going to sing songs today, not from the hymnal, but from just the chorus book. And then our responsive reading is actually taken, it's actually in the, in the uh, bulletin, so you can read that along with us as well. Um, I hope that you're using your church directories. I want to express my thanks again to Colleen and to Larry for their work on that. Colleen, you had an announcement you wanted to make, right? That means there's two of some of you families some places, and there's two of some of you families somewhere other places, right? <laughs> we have twins at church, I guess that's what that means. All right, I want to call your attention to the announcement about the next three Sundays. We will be back at Friendship Hall next week on the 26th. Hope that you're here with us. And then Palm Sunday, we will be at Friendship again. That is two weeks from today already. And that will be the first Sunday of the month, and so we will serve communion there on uh, Palm Sunday, the 2nd of April, and Easter is the 9th, only three weeks away, and we will be back here. They kick us out again, and we'll be back here on the 9th. So if you're here for those Sundays, we invite you to be a part of that, invite your friends, especially on Easter. Uh, there is a C and E crowd. You know what the C and E crowd is, right? That's Christmas and Easter crowd. That's the only ones that come, right? So, so there will be C and E people here, so. All right. Announcements that need to be made. Yes. I am hosting an Easter dinner that I'm kicking you all out of. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I have tickets here for sale. They're eight dollars a piece, and anybody would be interested. Okay. So you can see Sharon after the service. Uh, she has. She has. So if we want to blame anyone, we can blame you, right, Sharon? All right. Okay. Good. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's look at our opening scripture. Uh, there, it's taken from Psalm 91, where it says this, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the privilege of being together. And we pray, Lord God, that you would bless this time as we have come to worship you. Thank you for each person that has come. It is by no accident that we are here. We have come to worship and exalt the Almighty. And we pray, Lord God, that, that what comes from our lips and from our hearts may be in spirit and in truth uh, a pleasing aroma in your nostrils. 
And I pray, Lord God, that you, by your spirit, would come down and speak to us, that you would touch our lives today, touch our lives by your presence, through your word, as we pray together, as we give together, as we listen to your word together, as we sing songs of praise. I pray that this might be an interaction, an encounter with you. So bless this time together now, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, our first song is entitled, As the Deer, As the Deer. Depending on your book, I think it's page two or so. Then let's sing the three verses of this song. Thank you for singing that. How many had never sung that song before today? Raise your hand. Oh, okay. All right. Well, thank you for singing it well. Okay. We're going to read a responsive reading there. It's taken in your bulletin. It's taken from Psalm 40. I will read the part that says pastor, and you can respond together with the part that says people. And the last one says all, so that will be all of us together. So let's try it. Psalm 40, verses 1 through 5. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He brought me up out of the pit of destruction, out of the miry clay, and he set my feet upon a rock and made my footsteps firm. And he put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and will trust in the Lord. How blessed is the man Many, O Lord my God, are the wonders which thou hast done, and thy thoughts toward us. There is none to compare with thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they would be too numerous to count. God bless the reading of his word today. If you have your Bibles, I invite you to turn with me uh, to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 26, and uh, I'm going to be reading this not all at the beginning, but as we go through today. Acts chapter 26. This is uh, part of the uh, story of the Acts of the Apostles in the early church, and this is the Apostle Paul who gives his testimony before a man named King Agrippa. So we're going to turn to uh, Acts chapter 26. As I begin today, I, this is kind of the theme of my message. I'm going to read one verse from uh, Revelation chapter, well, two verses. Revelation chapter 12, verses 
uh, 10 and 11. It says this, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him, that is the believers, overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you today for your word and we pray your blessing over your word today as we consider it. We pray, Lord God, uh, that you might uh, encourage us in our walk with Jesus Christ to not be afraid to speak his name in public and to speak his name with, who, with those we come in contact with during the week. Bless this word as we consider it today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I have an outline if you want to follow along with me. There are five points I'd like to make today. Uh, and the title of my message is The Power of Our Testimony. The Power of Our Testimony. Now, if you know the story of Saul, Saul, in the new, uh, earlier part of the book of Acts, was one who had gone against the church. And now later on, he becomes one of the most uh, famous of the spokesmen. And he is now on trial and has appealed to Caesar because the Jews have uh, something to say against him. And, and he is with Festus, and Festus really doesn't know what to do. And so what Festus does is Festus then allows King Agrippa to hear Paul give a defense of his own life. And so chapter 26 of Acts is really Paul's defense before King Agrippa. So uh, it says there, in, I'm in chapter 26 now, it says there in the first verses, Then Agrippa said to Paul, You are permitted to speak for yourself. So Paul stretched out his hand and answered for himself, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because today I shall answer for myself before you concerning all the things which I am accused of by the Jews. Now, this is an interesting statement by the Apostle Paul because this is Herod Agrippa II. He's called King Agrippa in this text. But you know who Herod Agrippa was? This Herod Agrippa. Well, he was kind of from a long line of people that kind of had something against the Christian religion. So, for example, if you were to follow this along, we would find this out. We would find that... Uh, Herod Agrippa II's great-grandfather was the uh, Herod who tried to kill Jesus when he was a child. And remember, he went to Bethlehem and killed all the children that were two years old and under, thinking he was going to er eradicate Jesus from the scene. And then the grandfather of this King Agrippa, uh, he was the one who had John the Baptist beheaded. And then... Uh, Herod Agrippa's father was the one who was in charge when he took James, one of the apostles, and James was the first of the apostles to be martyred. And so there's a long line of history here in this family. And here Paul comes before Agrippa. Probably Agrippa's not too excited about hearing this because he's had a history of being against the church. But Paul says, I think myself happy that I can come before you. Okay, so my outline says this. Number one is all of us have a path we have followed. All of us have a path we have followed. Uh, in verse 4 of, my, of this text, the Apostle Paul says this. He says, um, I, I, I'm, I'm thankful, he said in verse 3, because especially you are expert in all the customs and questions which have to do with the Jews. Therefore, I beg you to hear me patiently. And he says, my manner of life from my youth, which was spent from the beginning among my own nation at Jerusalem, all the Jews know. They know me from the first if they were willing to testify that according to the strict sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. So Paul's life from a very young age was that he was a Pharisee. In fact, when you think about the way he was living his life, he was living his life really in a strict way to live exactly as the law said for the Jews. 
He studied under a man named Gamaliel, and Paul was very, very religious. In fact, in another place in the book of Philippians, Paul says, uh, when it has to do with the righteousness that's found in the law, I am found blameless. So here's Paul who had a path, who thought, who thought that he was doing the right thing. All of us have a path we have taken. As we consider our life, as you consider your life today, in the years of life that God has given to you, you have followed a path. There's been a path that you have chosen, and many times we talked about last week, it is based on what we know and what we've come to believe. And hopefully it's, we've, ta- we've taken steps because we've followed the scriptures. But all of us have taken a path. Secondly, it's this, that life is full of wrong turns. Life is full of wrong turns. Why do I say that? Well, I can talk from experience. Have you ever driven somewhere and you don't know where you're going? Before the age of GPS, did you find your way one day? I guess you must have because you're here today, right? (laughs) But there was a certain amount of frustration in not knowing where to go, wasn't there? Well, here's the Apostle Paul, who earlier in his life was Saul. And when I say life is full of wrong turns, here was Saul turned... Saul was so intent on following the the Jewish religion that he felt that this sect, he called it, this this thing called the way, that they they needed to come against that. And he says in this, he says um, uh, in verse 9, Indeed, I myself thought I must do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth, This I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests, and when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. He goes on, and I punished them often in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme, and being exceedingly enraged against them, I persecuted them even to foreign cities. Imagine that. Paul was so stringent, Paul was so interested and diligent to be against this religion, he did all kinds of things against the saints. In fact, he gives a little little, uh, hint into his life. He says there, he says, and being exceedingly enraged against them. Now, can you imagine his thought process? Here we're trying to follow the law. Here we're trying to be Jews. And here this sect comes. Oh, they have done such wrong things. I need to do everything I can to try to get rid of them. That was Paul's thought. And so as we look at Paul's life, we see that life is full of wrong turns. Paul made many wrong turns against the church. Well, number three in my outline is this, that Jesus met us along our path. And I hope that this is your testimony today, too. In fact, I think if, if anyone, any one of us here hasn't experienced this, then it's something that we need to think about. And that is, just as Saul was on his way, remember, it, he, had said, he had said in verse 12, um, sorry, in verse 10, he, 11, he said, uh, I persecuted them even to foreign cities that the story of Saul was this, that he was on his way to a place called Damascus. Damascus is up north of, of Galilee. He is on his way, and he's on his way to get more Christians. And so he says in verse 12, While thus occupied, as I journeyed to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests, at midday, O king, along the road I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun shining around me and those who journeyed with me. And when, they, when we had fallen to the ground, I heard a voice speaking to me and saying in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the goats. Okay, look at your bulletin in the front. This is one depiction of what happened that there was a bright light 
In fact, Saul, Paul describes it as a light. He said it was brighter than the sun. And he falls to the ground. When he falls to the ground, he hears a voice. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? So I said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. You see, Saul at that moment had an encounter with Jesus. Saul, the one who had gone on this path all his life, and thought he was doing the right thing. He had made many wrong turns, but all of a sudden he encountered Jesus and now Jesus had something to say about the way he was going to live. Jesus said in the next verse, but rise and stand on your feet for I have appeared to you for this purpose to make you a minister and a witness, both of the things which you have seen and of the things which I will yet reveal to you. I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles to whom I will now send you, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. What happened to Saul? Saul, the one who had been so diligent to stand against the Christian church, all of a sudden encountered Jesus Christ, and his life was transformed. He was converted to Christianity, and Jesus became the very purpose of his life. Now, instead of standing against Jesus and persecuting all those who would name his name, he became the foremost Spokesman for Jesus Christ. There are several large, what I would call, intersections in Lee County. Maybe you have driven through some of them. One of the big ones is right on the corner of Del Prado and uh, Pine Island. If you ever go to Lowe's or anything like that, that is one of the major intersections. Now, have you ever been in close to the intersection and seen cars go through a red light before? <laughs> All right. Now, I remember it wasn't at that particular intersection, but it was over here. It was at, uh, uh, on the old 41 and Pine Island Road. And I was, watching, I was watching the traffic, and I was coming up to that particular intersection, and I saw a car way past the red light decided that he or she, I don't know if it was a man or woman, decided that they were going to go through. And here on the other side came a large dump truck. And I thought, uh-oh, trouble. Sure enough, that car got turned around like, you know, like that. Because there was an interaction between that car and that truck. It was an intersection that that woman shouldn't have been in or that man shouldn't have been in, but he was. But here in this particular text, Paul is giving a story about there was an intersection in his life. He was headed a certain way in this path, and on this intersection, he had an encounter with Jesus. Now, it wasn't an accident. <laughs> it was on purpose that Jesus met him there. And his life was never the same after that. So what about you today? What about you? We have all been on a path in our life. And if we're honest, we can honestly say this, that life is full of wrong turns. But you know what happens? Then we meet Jesus. Then we meet Jesus. And when we meet Jesus, there is a transformation in our life. You see, in this text of Scripture, Paul tells the story about Jesus. And as he's telling the story, and I'm going to skip down a little bit, uh, he's before King Agrippa, and he asks Agrippa about, about how he believes. And Agrippa says this, Paul's in verse uh, 27, 
he says, King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know that you believe. And then Agrippa said to Paul, you almost persuade me to become a Christian. You almost persuade me to become a Christian. Now, unfortunately, we're left with the uncertainty of where Agrippa was after Paul's encounter with him. But you see, Paul had met Jesus, and Paul's life was transformed. In fact, if you go on, you'd have to go back in Acts and you read the story. Paul goes, he goes uh, to Damascus, and there's a man named Ananias. And God tells Ananias to go and minister to Paul. He's waiting for you. Uh, and Ananias goes, wait, 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 I know about this guy. I'm, not, I, I'm kind of upset that you're asking me to do this, and I don't know if I really want to go. And the Lord says you need to go, and so he goes. And he, and he ministers to Paul's life. And then later on, we talked about this a few weeks ago, Paul goes to Jerusalem. He wants to be part of the church. And the church goes, oh, we don't know so much about this guy. We're kind of skeptical. And it was Barnabas. Remember, we talked about Barnabas was the one who went and brought him to the church, proving that he really was one who had been transformed and his life was now for Jesus and instead of against Jesus. Well, here we see in our scripture that Paul's life, because he met Jesus, became one of serving Jesus. What about you today? What about you today? Have you met Jesus along the path of your life? Have you had an interaction with Jesus where your life was changed because you met him? As we read the Bible, and specifically the New Testament, we read the life of Jesus Christ, and we see that Jesus came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The, the story of the gospel of Jesus Christ is that Jesus came to die for our sins and to offer us the forgiveness of sins and sanctification through him. In fact, Jesus said to Paul, he said, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Paul's message now was to come to Jesus and receive forgiveness and justification and sanctification through him. The message is still the same for us today. My prayer for every one of you this morning is that Jesus Christ has, in, has come to you and you have received him as your own. You have accepted him as your savior and you've received the forgiveness of sins and the assurance of eternal life through him. All right, number four in my outline is this, our life was transformed. We said that already, that Paul's life was different now. In fact, for the rest of his life, he spent serving Jesus Christ. And, the, and before this, in the book of Acts, Paul goes on a missionary journey with Barnabas. And then he goes on another missionary journey with Silas and another, a third missionary journey. And finally, he goes to Rome because he's on trial. So Paul spends his life traveling. But everywhere he goes, he's not afraid to speak about the name of Jesus. And that's number five in my outline. We are now to tell others. I mentioned at the beginning of this message that Paul was before King Agrippa. Can you imagine being so daring as to speak about the name of Jesus in front of someone who had been an uh, uh, antagonist against Christianity? Paul was not afraid. I heard a story uh, told by uh, an evangelist. He has now gone on to glory. The evangelist's name was Luis Palau. Anybody heard of Luis Palau? Uh, this was about 30 years ago. He was invited to England, and he had lunch together with the royalty in England. And this was when Princess Diana and Charles had gotten married soon after their marriage. They were not long married. And he said... I was considering, they wanted me to speak that day, and I was considering what I was going to say, and I, I thought to myself, well, I can just kind of water this down because, you know, I'm in front of royalty. I don't want to offend anybody. 
And he said, just before he got up to speak, he said, Princess Diana actually leaned over him and she asked him a question, something to the effect of, can you tell me how, how it is someone is born again? And he said, all of a sudden I realized this was my opportunity and that I shouldn't back down from that opportunity. And so he said, I gave him both barrels. <laughs> Paul wasn't afraid of Agrippa. The power of Jesus Christ in our life gives us the privilege to be witnesses of his because his life in ours has transformed our life. And now we have opportunity. You have opportunity here at the park from day to day. You know what? Someone said to me uh, this last week, I was in the park, and they said, you know, it's different this year than every other year. Every other year it says, it's hard to talk to people because there isn't anybody else around walking. He said, but because of the hurricane and everything, more people are out talking than ever before. That means we have a greater opportunity. And someone has said, when people go through affliction, they are much more receptive to hear the things of God. And haven't we all gone through affliction this last year with the hurricane? And so here's our opportunity that the power of our testimony can bring life to other people. The message of Jesus Christ can be given to others so that just as our life, just as your life was transformed by an encounter with Jesus Christ, so their life can be transformed as well. Paul is an illustration of someone who was not afraid and used the story of his life to show that Jesus was the way to salvation. And he was offering that even to Agrippa. Now the reality is there are always going to be people that respond negatively. In fact, the whole reason why Paul was on trial was because all these Jews that heard the message of Jesus reacted against it. And when you share the message of Jesus Christ, guess what? Don't be surprised if people reject it. But there will be others. There will be others who were like Agrippa, who say, I got to think about this. Paul, you've almost persuaded me to be a Christian by your testimony today. Wouldn't it be great if a year from now, if we reconvene, and maybe we have to meet in Flamingo Hall again, if we reconvened, and you would have a testimony to say, you know, I shared my testimony with my neighbor, and they came to faith in Jesus Christ through it. They came to faith in Jesus Christ. You see, my friends, it isn't just the scriptures that we have as a foundation. Paul says we are living epistles of Jesus Christ. That our testimony in this day and age of how God has changed our life can be an opportunity for God by His Spirit to use that message to bring others to faith in Jesus as well. May it be so that just as Paul was unashamed and he was bold to speak the name of Jesus, may we be so bold as to speak his name as well. God bless you. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today for the story of Saul, who met Jesus on the road, and his life was transformed. And Lord, I think as we consider our own testimony, that God would have one like Paul's be our testimony as well. That we have encountered Jesus Christ, and our life has changed. And now we are his spokesman. Bless that truth to our hearts today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
All right, we want to give you an opportunity to give testimony to God. Maybe it's a testimony about something that happened in your life where the power of your testimony was effective in someone else's <coughs> life. Anyone want to share today? Greg, I'm going to give you the mic, Greg. I'm going to go give that to Greg. He's way in the back. Mr. Hall. Mr. Hall. Uh, I just wanted to say how much... Uh, God means to me and how special he is. I uh, asked him for forgiveness of my sins when I was 14 years old and at a church teen camp. And uh, the best decision I ever made in my life. And I uh, also want to thank him for uh, the opportunity uh, to be, that I'm here today and everything is well with me as far as um, I, I got a good report two weeks ago that my cancer is uh, not re not come back or anything so I'm good at, feeling pretty good about that and then uh, <clears throat> pastor asked me to share a, sto a little short story that I uh, uh, shared with them the other day and uh, and uh, so I, I told him I'd go ahead and do that so all about uh, about 18 years ago, my wife and I, Diane and I, were on a mission trip to uh, Ecuador, and I was out in the field with the, the two missionaries, and uh, we were in the jungle area, and there was, it was way back in the middle of nowhere, no electricity, and there's a little church there that we were going to have services with them that morning, and it was... Uh, they only had three sides on the church and uh, had a dirt floor, and they didn't have the money to put the fourth side on yet. So they had a big pot out in the, out in the grass out from the side of the church. They were roasting a monkey for dinner afterwards in this pot over a fire. But anyway, we're in the church, and the, and the pastor preached, was preaching, and, and there were little kids playing in the dirt back behind the preacher where he was preaching. And then when they would get too loud, he'd just grab them by the back of the pants and take them and set them with their parents. <laughs> but uh, this, this one gentleman got up to, uh, to uh, sing a song. And he had an old uh, acoustic guitar. And he was uh, singing a song. And then after the song, he wanted to testify. And he was testifying in Spanish. So... I'm not very fluent in Spanish, but the missionaries that I was with were. And he, would, and he started uh, talking, and uh, next thing I know, he's unbuckling his belt on his pants. And, and then he talked a little bit more, and then he unsnapped his pants. And then talked a little bit more, and then he, he uh, pulled the zipper down on his pants. And I thought, what in the world's going on here? And then next thing I know, he drops his pants to the floor. And I said to the missionary, what is he doing? And he says... He's trying to tell everybody that he had an uh, injury on his leg a long time ago, and they told him he'd never walk again, and he wants everybody to see the scar. <laughs> so I said, well, if I dropped my drawers in church, I think there'd be a mass exodus. <laughs> but anyway, there's an example of sharing your testimony. <laughs> awesome. Anyone else? The power of our testimony. That was a powerful testimony, Greg. Thank you very much. <laughs> and that guy's testimony. Are right, we going to sing a couple more songs today? And they're both in uh, our chorus book. The first one is There is a Redeemer. Uh, mine says it's page 7, but it might not be page 7 for yours. But let's sing uh, the one. Uh, we'll sing the chorus. Oh, no. We'll just sing... Uh, through one verse, I guess, in the chorus. Sorry. Oh. Uh -huh. 
Okay, thank you. I guess there were actually two verses, but we sang both verses together. That's for sure. All right, the other song we're going to sing is, maybe you can know this by heart, is He is Lord, He is Lord, He is risen from the dead, and He is Lord. <laughs> Bless you for the singing. Uh, we have opportunity to give. Uh, we don't have that as part of our message, but we do have offering plates on either one of the entrances. You can give that as you go today if you haven't done so already. We want to share and care in God's family. Are there any special requests that you have today that you would like for us to share or to pray about? Yes, Eileen? I just want to say my brother, Paul, Boyd, is doing better. He had his stem cell replacement. And he should be home the next week or the week after from the cancer center. All right, he has been, he has been at Moffat for several been weeks, right? Yeah. Center, yes. Okay, we want to pray for Paul today. We're glad to have Eileen here. Eileen mentioned this morning uh, she's glad to be here, but the circumstances aren't the best for being here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she, uh, she's here watching their home while they're up in Moffat. That's basically what she's been doing. Anyone else? Uh, yes, Debbie? I'd just like to ask prayers for our church back in Indiana. It's going through. The devil is alive and well, is all I can say. Okay. Pray for your church in Indiana. What's the name of the church? Brady Lane Church. Brady Lane? All Brady Lane. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That is amazing. Okay. Let's pray for Brady Lane Church. Someone else had their hand up here. Yes, Doris. I would like prayer for my second cousin who is in critical condition in Gulf Coast Hospital because a, I don't know what kind of gun, I don't know anything about guns. All I know is a, whatever it was, a bullet, the shots came up and brazed his face, and he's got fragments in his brain and is on a ventilator. And he has two small children and a wife, and they're just praying. And the two young girls went to be with their other grandparents. So. And what is his name? Uh, D.J. Duffy. D.J. Duffy. He goes by D.J. His name is Francis. But he goes by D.J. Okay. Did you want to say? Uh, we received word from um, Lisa Woodward, who is Woody's wife, that's Beth's sister, that um, they did find actual um, cancer in his spine and that the, the growth in his lung has about doubled. Did it say it's doubled? So we want to pray for him. He's going through, he's going to have four more treatments of chemo coming up. And they start Wednesday, major doses, but his bas girls' basketball team is just really pray that he can be well enough to actually go. Hmm. He's going to have the treatment on Wednesday? He probably will be. Okay. Uh, don't say that. Yeah. 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 We'll pray that he can. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Yes. Colleen. My daughter's fiance up in Michigan has blood pressure problems. He's What is his name? Dave Kendall. Dave Kendall. Anyone else? Yes, Sharon. Your friend back in Minneapolis, like I said, on his call this morning, remembers this young man, his name is a trap. He's taken to emergency room for a drug overdose. He wasn't looking really good, his blood pressure was way down. Pray for a trap, then God's will will be done there. Anyone else? 
Anyone else? All right. We're going to go to prayer then, believing that God is able to do his will in our life. The Lord says to us in Jeremiah, Call unto me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. So let's turn to him in prayer now, can we? Father in heaven, today we come before you in Jesus' name, and we're thankful for the privilege of being together. We're thankful, Lord, for each person that has come today, and we pray, Lord God, that as we have uh, come to worship you, that, that uh, not only can we come and exalt you in prayer, but we can also petition you in prayer. And Lord, today we come um, praising you and exalting you because you are the God who can transform our lives like you did Paul in the New Testament. And I pray, Lord God, that in each of our lives today that, um, that Jesus may be a reality to us. That having had an interaction with you, I pray, Lord God, that we may have surrendered to you as Lord and Savior and have experienced the, the joy and the assurance of the forgiveness of sins and of eternal life with you. And I pray, Lord God, that that may be true for each person today. And today we want to come with our request, first of all, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem because we're encouraged to pray that way. We're encouraged to pray for those who are in authority over us. And so we pray today for our president, President Biden, for the Supreme Court and for the Congress. We pray for our governor in the state of Florida, Governor DeSantis, and the Supreme Court of Florida and the Congress of Florida. We pray for the mayors of Cape Coral and Fort Myers, that in each of those cases, these men and women who serve God may serve according to your will, and that they may be enlightened as to uh, a biblical worldview. Today, Lord, we want to also pray for our missionaries. We're thankful today for Carlos and Lillian Calero, for little Emma and even younger Josiah. We pray your blessing upon them as they minister. And the things that they have mentioned to us about their ministry, for this Patmos ministry, uh, for the Christian school enrollment that they have there, for Campos Blancos, which is the ministry to the community, and for uh, Carlos being able to visit the United States with a visa. We pray for these requests. Maybe there are others on their heart. We pray for their own relationship as a husband and wife, that you would strengthen that as well. We pray, Lord God, for those who have been uh, affected, uh, whether it's those of us here in uh, southwest Florida who have been affected by the hurricane, whether it's others who have been affected by the earthquake in the Middle East. We pray, Lord God, that that your grace and mercy might be upon them. And we pray that the love of Christ may be demonstrated by many who help those in need. <clears throat> or we want to continue to pray for these requests of people. Today we want to pray for Paul Hoyt, Eileen's brother, as he uh, is recovering from his treatment. Lord, I pray that it might be effective in bringing about healing for him. Pray for my brother-in-law, Woody Woodward, uh, Lord, as he is going to go through new chemotherapy, I pray that this might be effective in ridding his body of the cancer as well. Thankful for today for the testimony of Greg, who, who has uh, been given, uh, have his cancer go in remission. We pray your continued touch upon his life. For DJ Duffy, God, who experienced this gunshot wound, we pray, Lord God, that you would minister to his life and to his family. We pray for this trap, God, that your will would be done in his life up in Minnesota. We pray for the church uh, in Indiana, Brady Lane Church. We pray, God, that you would minister there. God, I pray that, that your will would be done, and I pray that, that the evil one's effects on people's life might be diminished. And I pray, Lord God, that uh, all sides involved in the, the conflict there might see uh, the will of God be done. And I pray, Lord God, that there would be a real dose of humility that comes on the part of the people there. For Dave Kendall as well, we want to pray for him. God, uh, Colleen's um, daughter's fiance, we pray, Lord God, that you would minister to his life as well. 
Lord, for these other requests that we have mentioned in other weeks, we want to pray uh, for our dear friend Don. Thank you that he's recovering from his hip replacement. We want to pray for Doris's brother-in-law, Ed. We want to pray for Helmut and Anna as they have moved back to Wisconsin. Bless them in, bless them in the transition there. We want to pray for Helen's daughter, Tamara, and her family as she faces her own health issues. Pray for our dear uh, friend Elaine Longjohn as she continues to recover from her stroke. Bless Pete as he walks with her in this. Give him strength and bless his family as they help him as well. For Dan Reasoner, we pray for uh, him in recovery from his cornea transplant. For Bob Knake, we thank you for him being here today. And as he still struggles with heart issues, we pray, Lord God, that you would minister to his life and to his body. For Connie Breeding, Doris's cousin, uh, for Maria Bangart, we pray for her as well. Lord God, we thank you. Uh, we can pray for these other requests for uh, Ron Coles, Betty Cole's husband, who has numerous health issues. We pray that you'd minister there. Uh, for Joe Adkins, for uh, the Jim Moran family, we pray for them as they mourn his loss. Uh, for Bob's sister, and uh, we pray for her as well as she improves. For Ed Ashley and Betty, we thank you for them today, and we pray your touch upon Ed's life. Bless Betty as she cares for him. And for this Bev, Lord, who is fighting cancer and lost her daughter, we pray for her as well. Certainly there are other requests, God, that we have not mentioned. Uh, we want to pray for Doris's son, Bobby, too. We thank you for him and bless him in his situation as well. Lord, for unspoken requests today, we pray, Lord God, for the heartache that some of us may feel today that we haven't expressed. We pray, Lord God, that you administer to that need according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Whether it's a physical need, a financial need, an emotional need, a mental need, Lord, I just pray that you administer there today. Thank you, Jesus, that you have come to our lives and that our lives have been transformed because you have come to us. And we rejoice in you today, Lord. Give us grace and strength and courage and boldness to be witnesses to Jesus just as Paul was before Agrippa in our text today. Thank you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, we we're thankful that you've come today. Uh, let's stand together and receive the benediction, and we'll sing the doxology. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen.